Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and this is video 2 of 4 and it's converting a JPEG logo to a vector and then importing that into FreeCAD. So in the last video we dealt with actually importing that into Inkscape and converting it from the JPEG to the SVG to the vector and in this video we're looking at getting that into FreeCAD some problems that may occur and how to fix them and how to use the sketcher to move that logo, position it and start doing some further refinements of that logo in there. So I hope you're still with me from the previous video and let's get started. If you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0 Okay, so let's build this logo in FreeCAD. So I'm going to create a new document. So let's go up to File and Import. And we're going to use the Shield logo there and open that up. And we're going to select the SVG as geometry. So we're selecting that one, selecting that. So it's been imported, but we've got a bit of a problem. And you can see we've got this speckling, this explosion of more or less little vectors appearing so individual parts this path looks like something's happened in there and this relates back to our original geometry that we've imported in our original SVG something's wrong with the vector so let's see if we can solve that so I'm going to get rid of these we don't need these let's try that again now the best thing to do if we come back in is we've obviously got something wrong with this so the best thing to do is simplify what we've got on screen and we can do that by as these are different parts we could actually break this apart so I'm going to break this apart and I know I've got a problem with this bit here so go up to path and break apart that's broken this up into the individual segments in there so each part can be moved that is its own separate part this makes life a lot easier in debugging this SVG or this vector we've got a problem with this side but we don't have a problem with this side and if you look at these two they're more or less the same they're just rotated so let's do a bit of compare between these two and see what we got so I'll double click this one come in and looking at it there's nothing that looks out of the ordinary on this one to me which shouldn't do because they're all okay so let's have a look at this one it's looking good I mean this here that's quite that point is quite close to that line it's almost overlapping that line do we have the same here we don't have the same here so that might be the issue let's zoom in a bit let's see what's going on No, that actually looks all right. So I'm not sure what's wrong here. What we can do is simplify this path. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I could go through and start deleting points and figure out what's wrong, but that might take a little while to do that. So what I'm going to do, because I've broken this up, I can simplify one of these. I could even take a copy of this and rotate it because we know these two are the same but what I'm going to do is click this one go to path and simplify path I'm just going to double click it to show what we've got there at the moment path simplify path and that's actually reduced down the amount of points so you can see we've got one point there and a number of points there let's see if that's helped let's control save that so control s for save or file save and let's jump back to FreeCAD, file import, shield logo, SVG, 
and that seems to have worked so that's there so we've obviously simplified the path enough to allow that to come in so we must have had something that was overlapping in there so now we've got our vector in here and it's all looking good what I'm going to do is we're just going to explore what these are so we've got these separate paths and what it's done it's broken these apart even though we did break apart to fix this issue here this will still happen if you imported an image that has parts that can be separated off into separate objects because they're not connected to the other parts in here so this is good so we've got this here but we can't really do much with this we can't extrude if we're doing part and we can't pad our pocket if we're doing the part design we need this as a sketch so this is our next job getting this into a sketch and that's quite easily done to do that we'll go off to the draft workbench and it's not obvious but why would you do draft operations when you want this as a sketch but this is the workbench that you will need to edit these paths into a sketch now I can leave these paths as they are and convert each of these paths to a sketch if I so desired because what, what normally happens is if you had something like text that was separated from this main object so we had text that ran across here but didn't connect then that will be a separate path here as well and you may want to preserve that so we either emboss it um, extrude or pad it have the other parts of the icon in some other operation so you could have the icon or logo pocketed with your text padded from the underlying object so you get that different effect there but I don't want with that with this I just want to either pad pocket or strew this or hollow it out even so to do that I am going to actually merge these paths together and that's quite easily because done because we actually make this into a compound select one path hit, hit and shift select the bottom path that selects them all and now if we go to, to modifications and this upgrade and downgrade here and this is not obvious from these what they actually do but if we come into here we should have an upgrade in here and this gives you a bit more information so it upgrades the selected objects into a more complex shape so we hit that what should happen it turns it into a compound so it's linked those all together and created a compound shape for us now from there we have a few options depending if we want this bigger at all then we could clone it and change the scale down here so we can say 2.5 2.5 and that's changed the scale of our object there but I don't want to do that so I'm going to get rid of that clone Let's delete that out and if we had a clone there we do exactly the same as what we're going to do now we're going to actually use that compound and we're going to create a sketch from it and that's quite easily done go into modification draft a sketch down here or we can come over to our toolbar and we have the option with a bit more detail there convert by directionally between draft object and sketch objects so when I hit that what will happen it will create it as a sketch if I hit that again it will go back to a compound with the individual parts there so if I just hide this and you can see we've got the individual parts there I don't want this let's get rid of that I want the sketch so I've gone through that again I've got the compound and I've used the convert by directionally and there's the sketch there also from the mod modifications draft to sketch so we've got that there now we can either remove or hide the compound in fact I can get rid of that so I'm going to get rid of that compound and now I've got a sketch now don't worry when we go into this because it's a bit scary if we double click the sketch 
So it looks very busy in here. You've got all these green lines and these are B-spline combs that you're seeing. It controls the curvature of the B-spline, the gut of the B-spline, you've got a top, middle and the center, which some people refer to as the gut. Um, what you can do is hide these B-spline. If you go out to sketch, sketch B-splines tool, and show hide B-spline degree, Control polygon comb. So this is the curvature comb. That's what you need. So click on that, and the curvature comb disappears. And now you're left with a number of other features on there, like the numbers that you see here. And we can hide those by going out to sketch, B spline tools, and we look down. There's the control point weight there. Let's get rid of that. There's some more there that we can get rid of, so sketch, sketch B spline tools, multiplication, and finally, got the degree here, so that can go as well. So now we've got a much cleaner sketch that we can move about. And what I want to do is move this to the center point. And we can do that by selecting all of those like so. So that's everything selected now. Sketch, sketch of tools, and move. And we get a line. So this is going more or less to the center point. And I'm just going to move it to the center there. So that's moved our sketch into the center. Let's close that. And now we can start padding, pocketing, or doing whatever we want. So I'm going to first start in the part design. It is my favorite part of FreeCAD. I normally do part design rather than parts, but I will do them both. So we're in the part design now. I want to create a body. Now I want to create a sketch, and this is going to be the sketch that this will sit on and either pocket off of or pad into. This will be different for your applications. You may have something like a grill of a car that you want to put this logo into, or you've created an object or a box that you want to place this on. Depending on what your application is, this will differ for you. But I'm just going to place this on, I think, either a circle or a hexagon, just to show you how you can actually do the pad and pockets with this. So I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to place it on the XY plane because this is where this is, where this is sitting. And we're going to OK that. Now we've still got that in view, which is good. If it's not, come over to the model, click on your sketch, and hide and show that sketch. And let's go back to the task. Right, so I'm going to create a hexagon. So I'm going to constrain it to the middle. And I'm just going to place this in a hexagon. Now I'm just looking at the composition of the hexagon where I'm going to place it and I think that will do it's just going to be just for the demonstration and close that and I'm going to pad that up I can just go 10 millimeters on that so that's fine so at the moment our sketch is not in that body so I'm going to move that into our body so that's the sketch for the logo that we need and at the moment it's not attached to any face it's just sitting there it's not even attached to the bottom face that so you can see that's just sitting on the bottom there. It's not actually attached to that face, it's just in our 3D space and that's just sitting on top of it. So if we click on the sketch and we want the map mode. So we click on the end of the map mode to get to those icons and bring this up. And we just select that face and that pops it onto that face. And now we can hit OK. So that's mapped to that face now. Let's just fix the, ro fix the rotation of the scene, so fit section, there we go. That's the rotation fixed on there. And now what I'm going to do is just pocket that into there. So we can use the pocket or even the pad. So make sure we've got that sketch selected. So it goes green, select it now, and pocket that into there. And that's that pocketed in there. We can go all the way through if we so desire. So through all 
that's gone all the way through now and we can OK that or if we want it padded go into the sketch and pad that like so depending on how far we want that padded we can choose whatever we want there so OK that so that is basically our logo on a piece of material all ready to go so that's our logo on a part design we're now going to place this as a part and extrude that out so I'm going to get rid of this pad I'm going to keep the sketch so it's the same process for a part and I don't want the body so let's move that sketch out and get rid of the body now to extrude this I'm going to go over to the part click on the sketch and it's as simple as clicking the extrude selected sketch or going out to part and extrude and we can set up our extrusion here with whatever parameters we want I'm just going to OK that and now that's extruded out like so so it's as simple as that it's much quicker and now we've got this extrusion that we can play with. So in video three, our next video, we're looking at adding chamfers and fillets onto our logo and refining it that bit further. And we'll look at the problems around that and the case in where we will have to refine the logo down to something with less faces like this and how you would do that with what you currently have. So that's up on my channel now and I'll see you in there shortly. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from, any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.